powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Russ Riesiger. And I'm Janelle Slade. Billings Hospital is asking patients to find other options as area emergency departments reach capacity. The overload putting major stresses on the staff at Billings Clinic as the flu and other illnesses keep more and more people going to the ER. Now this isn't the first time the hospital seen so many patients. Samantha Sullivan standing by in the Q2 newsroom to bring us more. Sammy. While Russ and Janelle at Billings Clinic this morning, patients were being moved to conference rooms and were being evaluated in the hallways because the ER was just out of space. Billings Clinic made the announcement earlier this morning saying they reached the highest level, black, on its capacity scale. They say it's a similar situation at other hospitals in the state. The influx in patients began about three weeks ago and is due in part to a spike in flu cases, not just in Yellowstone County, but in the state as a whole. Hospital staff now encouraging anyone with the flu or other minor injuries or illnesses to call the nurse helpline or visit a walk-in or express care clinic before rushing to the ER. This is not a crisis situation at all. We're, we're, we're certainly managing our patients. With, I believe we're, our patients are getting outstanding, safe patient care, but this is a situation where uh, this is impacting our flows, that we do need people to understand the wait times are going to be longer. Now, St. Vincent Healthcare also issued a similar alert last week. Janelle. All right, thanks so much, Sammy. In other news tonight, the former Billing Skyview football player accused of raping four girls will be tried as an adult next year. 17-year-old Braden Pond agreed today in Yellowstone County District Court to waive his right to a transfer hearing, which would have determined whether his case could move to juvenile court. Judge Michael Moses then ordered a jury trial set for January 21st, 2020. Now, last summer, Pond was charged with five counts of sexual assault without consent. One incident in 2016 and four more spanning from February 2017 to May 2017. Court documents state two incidents occurred in a Walmart parking lot, one at a house party and another two in Pond's truck. Pond pleaded not guilty in September. If convicted, he could spend the rest of his life in prison. New information tonight in the federal case against a former Miles City athletic trainer accused of the sexual abuse of dozens of boys. Newly filed documents state James Jensen was catfishing boys on the Internet and the abuse crossed state lines. His daughter told prosecutors she believed Jensen had high school age boyfriends all across the country. Another relative saying they found Jensen using photos of students to represent himself as a teenager online. Two victims also described abuse out of state, one at a wrestling tournament in North Dakota, the other on an athletic trip to California. It was all part of the program, which Jensen is accused of using to sexually abuse male athletes under the promise of increased athletic performance. Now, last week, Jensen was ready to plead guilty to the federal charges of using means of interstate commerce to persuade or coerce, coerce a minor into sexual activity. Yeah, but the judge stopped him, saying he first needed more proof from prosecutors. Jensen will be back in court tomorrow morning. Now, also tonight, new information on that story we first brought you last night about Montana's statute of limitation laws for sexually abused minors. The issue has gained major momentum in light of the Jensen accusations. Andrea Lutz joining us now with a look at this new bill. What would it do, Andrea? Well, that's right. And you know, there are already some bills that are in play, uh, both to change up Montana's civil and criminal statute of limitation laws. But now there's this other bill that would essentially substitute those proposed bills on the same topic. One of the main proposals already before the legislature would remove any time limits on when a child sex abuse victim can file suit. And on that bill, there was some opposition, including from former freshman, or I should say current freshman lawmaker and former U.S. attorney for Montana, Bill Mercer. That bill was introduced by Democrat Shane Morjo. So now Chairman Republican Alan Doan says the new bill would expand the current time restrictions on civil lawsuits, but not eliminate them. He says it would also improve reporting requirements and make it easier to apprehend and prevent serial abusers. Lawmakers now say this new approach is a way that all parties can find a solution. This just kind of gets it to one place. Everyone's on the same page and we're moving one, one uh, bill together. We need to get the predators off the streets and away from the children. If they're not taken off the street, then they, these cases are going to keep going. So to protect children, we need to get these cases reported when they unfortunately happen and we get a, need to get the predator off the street. 
We are told details about this new bill are still being discussed, but that it will increase the time limits for victims seeking civil damages, something that's important to Miles City uh, sex abuse survivors. Russ. All right, thank you, Andrea. In Wyoming, one person is dead after an overnight fire in Sheridan on Tuesday. First responders were dispatched to the Edwards Motel on North Main Street. They discovered smoke coming from the building, found the fire inside. People inside were forced to evacuate the building. While crews were fighting the fire, a person was found dead in one of the rooms. The cause of the fire is still unknown at this time, and the victim's age, name, and cause of death have also not yet been released. In the midst of Heart Health Month, we head to St. Vincent Healthcare to check out an exercise program catered specifically toward heart recovery. Tonight, Q2's Jenny Fix uh, checks in with a familiar face to find out if cardiac rehab could potentially benefit you. Patient regains strength and gets back to mobility. So there's a recovery immediately after surgery, and then after that, there's a, an important period of recovery called cardiac rehab, and that spans about a three-month period of time where uh, patients get a supervised uh, exercise. They also get um, information about regarding their diet and uh, healthy living. Kind of get them back into it um, right after surgery, and then after they graduate from that program, then they can come over and continue exercising and medical exercise under supervision. This is where I come several times a week and meet with my friends and do some exercise. Following a heart attack, our own Ed McIntosh started off at cardiac rehab and he can now be found at medical exercise. I have to admit that when I got started with it, you know, it was like I knew I had to go do my time and I said, okay, I'll go to cardiac rehab and I'll go two or three times a week, I get through it, and then it's like, okay, my sentence is over and I can cut free. And I, once I started with the program, I actually wanted to come more often. The supervision and atmosphere allow patients to recover at their own pace and without judgment. And you see everything from stroke victims who are relearning how to walk to people who are just trying to make the best of the life um, that they have in the years they have remaining. They help me set goals. I'm very goal oriented. And they'll say, do till fatigue. I'm like, no, give me numbers. I want goals. I want to achieve and go beyond the goals and they're very good at keeping those just out of reach. Outpatient rehab is more than just healing the body. It's also therapeutic on an emotional level. The camaraderie here is really special. The people are really nice. Um, a lot of joking, a lot of kidding, a lot of fun. They make it fun. Uh, I asked Ed one time, why do you come here? You could probably go to any gym. He said, I like the atmosphere, there's no competition, and the, the people are inspiring, and that's right on the money. Folks that are coming here are not people that are gonna go to a regular gym. They're people that have been coming through some sort of a life-changing medical event. Maybe they're just getting older. Watching them overcome some major life obstacles, and it's just a great reason to keep coming back. Many patients have been coming for decades. Medical exercise is something that they can continue for life. You know, we're not getting any younger, we're all getting older, and we just have to take care of ourselves. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a choice, it's a conscious decision you have to make to lead that kind of lifestyle. It's not easy. If it was easy, everyone would do it. But um, I think if you make it a habit um, and you make it with purpose, I think it, you'd have a better outcome. In Billings, Jenny Fick, MTN News. And to learn more about whether you could be referred to the medical exercise program, you can contact your physician. Now from there, you would meet with an exercise specialist to build your individual program. Up next on tonight's 530 News, don't let the winter chill deter you from getting ready for this summer's Relay for Life. We're going to head to the kickoff event. And in sports, semifinals are set for your Class A Super Divisional. Scott shows us which four local teams power in. And coming up in weather, we had a pretty nice day today, but I tell you what, we are expecting to see another night of very cold temperatures. We'll tell you all about it and when we warm up again in a few more minutes. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Breen. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.